Support for Entrepreneurs Enigma and the shows in the Marketing Podcast Network is provided by Active Campaign. If you're looking for a way to grow your business, you need to check out Active Campaign. It's a powerful marketing automation platform that can help you increase your sales, improve your customer service, and build stronger relationships with your customers. With Active Campaign, you can create and send email campaigns, manage your leads and customers, create landing pages, set up automated workflows, and track results. All on one approachable platform. Active Campaign has more than 10,000 five star reviews in G2 from happy users. Preview Me is one. They're a B2B software company that uses Active Campaign to send their prospective customers highly visual and personalized emails as they progress through the CRM stages, such as completing a demo. This has increased their click through rate 96%. If you're serious about growing your business, you've got to check out Active Campaign. Try it today for free and see how it can help you achieve your goals. Now, for a limited time, Active Campaign is offering you, the listeners of Entrepreneurs Enigma, a chance to double your contacts for free when you sign up at activecampaign.com slash activate. That means if your email list is 10,000 contacts, you only need to pay for 5,000. Or you can pay for 10,000 and get an extra 10,000 totally free. Personalize your customer experience. Do it with automation. Like the 185,000 businesses that have an active campaign. Go to activecampaign.com slash activate to sign up today. Activecampaign.com slash activate. Terms and conditions apply. Entrepreneurs and Nigla is a podcast for the ups and downs of entrepreneurship. So the wins and the fails that we all face being entrepreneurs. How we learn from adversity. Every week, I talk to a different entrepreneur with a story to tell. I'm Seth Goldstein. Come with me on the journey. This is Entrepreneur's Enigma. Let's get started. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Entrepreneur's Enigma podcast. I came in too soon on that, but that's fine. (laughs) Anyhow, I'm Seth, your humble host. I've been that way since I was born. Maybe not a humble host, but I've been... Seth, since I've been born. So today I have Mike Whiston. It is midnight where he is. Um, it's not midnight where I am. So he's clearly on the other side of the world. He's calling in, calling in. Jeez, I'm old. He's coming to us from Japan. <laughs> and I really appreciate that he's coming in. He is the CEO, founder of Mopod, which is a podcast promotion engine of sorts. And we're going to get more into the nitty gritty with Mike. He is in Japan. He has two kids, a wife, and he's currently 20-year-old whiskey, I think. We'll bring Mike in here and ask him what especially he's drinking. What are you drinking today? How's it going, I am drinking a 21-year-old Royal Salute. Thank you. You gave me a reason to open this up. I I feel honored. I feel honored, my friend. This is awesome. This is great. So you are the founder of Mopod, and you are originally from the New York area, right? Yep, uh, Stamford, Connecticut, but you know, for yeah, most enough, people yeah. outside of the Northeast, I just say I'm from New York because it's easier. You need to know, like, I'm, from, I'm just north of Philadelphia. I say I'm from Philly. You know? Yeah, exactly. I, I, sound like, I sound like I'm from Philly, so go figure. Yeah, so, you know, I, I walk like I'm from New York, you know. <laughs> oh, God. Well, I actually probably keep up with the Japanese because they walk fast, too. No, not too much. Well, I guess they work with they walk with purpose and they don't look around. They look like straight ahead yeah. or, you know, they, they you know. There's no making eye contact. So, you know, they almost it's kind of like New York. York. It's kind of like yeah, with purpose. Exactly. You, you, only New Yorkers will run you over. Like they will, if you stop in front of them, they'll just go right through you. And they Actually, my favorite thing, sorry. my favorite thing is, and the biggest contrast on that, on that front is in Japan, they follow the red lights, uh, no matter what. So oh, wow. if there's a red light at a crosswalk, there could be no cars for an, in any direction within sight. And there could be like, you know, a thousand people standing you know, between and the two sides walk. and they'll all just sit there and wait. And if and, and it's not illegal, like you're not going to get arrested. You're not going to get in trouble if you cross when it's red. It's just you're not supposed to do something in New York. But um, the rule follows. You, know, you do. Yeah. And, and if you do it, they look at you like you're doing like some type of mock magic. It's not like, oh, you shouldn't do that. It's like, how are you doing that? <laughs> how did you get through the how did you get through the invisible barrier? <laughs> Meanwhile, you're dancing, walking across. No, exactly, yeah, exactly. Especially, I follow the you know, rules over here. It's the right way to do it. They're they're very it's, conformist. It's society. the right thing to do. Yeah, you should do that exactly. So, you started this when you were over in Connecticut, right? In the in New York. Yep. Uh, me and my co-founder Joe Rubin, uh, we started this up, and 
Uh, it's How been a blast. You know, about four years ago, uh, we actually didn't wow. start in podcasting. We started at a company's Mo Media. And mm. you know, I come from the job space. I spent you know a long time, many years in the job space, working with just about every major job board uh, companies oh, like wow. ZipRecruiter and Monster Career yeah. Builder, Lensa, Next, etc. And the original idea was bringing non-jobs revenue to the job space. So uh, newsletters was yeah. our jam, and you know became the largest driver of engaged subscribers. So just about every major newsletter in the U.S. Oh, uh, wow! And uh, about three years ago, we launched MoPod, and you know, it's a, a product within Mo Media. Uh, and has since become uh, our you know, the, the vast majority of our business. It's amazing uh, how that happens. The baby becomes the the leader. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's and it's way more interesting. It's like way more exciting. Yeah. Like uh, going from newsletters, which you know, uh, don't get me wrong. I, I love newsletters. I, I love that mm. side of the business. It's exciting in its yeah. own right. But podcasting, you get to like touch on so many different things and uh, yeah. so many different subjects and so many different personalities. And uh, it, it just feels so much more engaging and real. I love it. I love it. So we talked about this briefly on the pre-show, which was not recorded. So you don't have to join a Patreon or anything to get the pre-show because it was not recorded. Inside Joke on Podcasting, how most people say, oh, you get the pre-show. We're just chewing the fat, you know, you know, if you subscribe to the Patreon. No, there is no Patreon. There's no recorded pre-show. So we'll, we'll address it here. So Cheers you initially, that. exactly, you initially met your wife on MySpace. I she, did. She, and she's originally from Japan. So you have family in Japan. Makes sense you're in Japan. Other than Japan's just an awesome place to be. You know, I, but I'm it's like you had, a, you had a reason, you more than just let's go to Japan kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been in you know, the, the U.S. my whole life. And yeah. my wife moved here. Yeah. yeah, yeah, well, it's not that, it's, it's just a... I was excited to try something new. So yeah. you know, my, my wife moved to the U.S. Uh, after we got married and she lived there for 14 years. And uh, you know, we had our kids there and our kids went to school and our, our kids went to Japanese school as well on the weekends. So they both sp uh, they both speak English and Japanese. My wife at home That's only spoke wild. to them in Japanese. So, oh, really? uh, yeah. So oh, uh, they, they both speak fluently. fluently. Yeah. Awesome. You know, it, you know, How are you four, doing? 10 years it, old. So I in New York, I'm awesome. <laughs> Yeah. in japan but, i'm like i have some work to do <laughs> but you can get i'm sure you can get around and i'm sure they they're more as happy to talk in english to you because they want to practice their english and you're like well i want to practice my japanese and they're like ah there's an argument let's put up fisticuffs yeah no it, it works out I, there's a bar right next to my apartment that i like to yeah. go to and uh they don't speak a lick of english but they Ooh, love helping me with my japanese it. yeah it's great it's really uh, yeah, the, the, culture yeah yeah, they're, they're pretty cool. It, it, like, just the experience has been amazing. We're going to take a quick break, hear from our sponsors, and get right back to the show. Support for this show and all the other shows on the Marketing Podcast Network is provided by Momento. If you have your own podcast, you know how hard it is to produce and get all the cool little clips out and all that stuff. Promoting is half the battle. What if you could upload your episode, video, or audio and have AI pull out all the best moments for you to use in social media. Well, you can with Memento. Upload the video or audio, review the recommended clips, click the couple of buttons, customize the colors, fonts, and hit save. Instantly, Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, Facebook, and LinkedIn posts all materialize before your eyes. All with video and audio embedded for dynamic promotions that drive people to the episode. And the AI kicks out show notes even transcripts, and even social media captions. All you have to do is review and post them. Because you listen to this show, you get a free trial of Memento to test for yourself. Go to bit.ly slash Memento MPN and sign up today. It's bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash Memento M-P-N. And you know people are friendly, and they're uh, how long have you been? Uh, they're very for? dedicated to what they to what they're doing, and they, they yeah. take a lot of pride in everything that they do. And you, know, yeah. you, you see someone with a job that in the U.S. you might look down on, uh, but here they take so much pride in every job that they have. Uh, you don't see people yeah. like you know with on their looking at their cell phone, you know, doing something you know, in on it. Yeah, yeah, they're there. They're professional. Oh. Uh, you know, sometimes there's a smile on their face. It just they're content in what they're doing. America's very, it, it's about money. Everything is about it's money. Elitist, so, yeah, yeah. The, 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 that, that, at the end of the day, it's uh, that's the goalpost: is how much money can I make and how can I make more? 
yeah. and if you know if there's an opportunity to make more somewhere else why am i doing this yeah um and it, and it can be deflating whereas over here the general mentality from what i've experienced is uh i need to make enough to live my life and then i need to you know make a life outside of that yeah and then they're big yeah, on like work-life that. balance too which well some are Selling no, men, they work a lot. Uh, they work a lot of hours. Work, uh, I'm gonna take that back because I, I remember studying J- J- Japanese culture in high school, and I was about to say, "Wait, Seth, where are you coming up with that?" But they, yeah, they, yeah, yeah, they work a lot of hours. My brother-in-law, he works, uh, you know, six a.m. to eleven p.m. right now. Oh my so gosh, a little insane. I'm like, dude, like that is take a breather, a, a little much. <laughs> take a breather, but you know, he's supporting his family yeah. and all that. So, so Mo, Mo Pod and Mo Media. So, how did yep. you come up with this whole idea? Like. I mean, obviously, you start with the, with newsletters, but how, yep, like, so, how do you come up with the idea to like be a, the, well, the, the the engine? Yeah, sure. So the podcasting side actually was it was born from newsletters. Uh, we had our we're, we're the largest driver of engaged subscribers to uh, you know, Morning Brew and the Hustle back uh, before their acquisitions by Inside oh, wow. uh, Insider and uh, HubSpot, and uh, you know they both had podcasts, and it kind of spurred the idea you know with business casual and my first yeah. million and you know they had mentioned that you know look we have these podcasts if you're able to do what you're doing in newsletters and bring them over to podcasting it's something you would be interested in buying so that you know when awesome? you have, when you have awesome someone when that happens like an yeah. idea is handed to you like yeah like, someone's willing this. to pay you for something that you haven't built yet and i'm like all right we're like let's figure this out and uh you know we just want to take the exact same approach full transparency uh, performance first, you know, pay for performance, don't pay for uh, clicks or don't pay for impressions. You're paying yeah. just for performance at the end of the I day. Um, and we went to figure it out and that's exactly what we've done. You know, we have, and it works. Yeah. I've used it and it works. And, and you were also in the pre-show, which was not recorded. It was not on Patreon or anything like that. Um, you said that like three to 5% stick of the people who downloaded and get it through Mopod actually stick around and i can actually vouch that's on the that. bo- uh, that's that's with the mopod boost side right right so we have mopod two products for mopod boost we have an enterprise mopod boost uh it's a lot more robust uh you know you get yeah. a dedicated account manager we build Ooh. the custom creatives and uh you know anywhere between three and ten different pro- uh, programmatic strategies on every campaign uh but i mean you're looking at a minimum of five thousand bucks for those campaigns and yeah, then we have the self-serve where it's a hundred dollar mm-hmm. minimum and we're still running three programmatic campaigns, uh, and you know everything's it automated. And it works. It works. It, it, I, I can vouch <laughs> for it. I mean, I mean, yeah, it's a hundred dollars. It's not cheap, but it's not expensive. I mean, it's a very profound statement I just made. It. That's the, I, I should win an Academy Award for that statement. No, but um, the idea of it that that, that they then stick around like Entrepreneurs Enigma has been hovering around like eight hundred downloads a month. And with with a little push from Mopod, we were above a thousand for the first time this month. So thank you, sir. And so and someone I, just recently said, "I get a little, I, I get by with a little boost from my friends." <laughs> yeah, you know, wah 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 wah. But, but that's the whole idea: is that like podcasting? It's a discovery issue. And same thing with newsletters too. It's a discovery right. issue. There's so many out there, and there's so many out there that aren't actively you publishing out there, but they're still in the ether. And you got to compete with the, the zombie ones. <laughs> I guess we call them zombies. The zombie ones that are like three or four episodes that are still out there, which are good. You know, that's good. You keep them out there. Keep you know, because with the digital whole digital thing, things disappear from the web. They're not really existing anymore. It's not tactile like where you have papers from 1945 or anything like that. But mm-hmm. um, but when you're really trying to break through the craft, you need a little boost, and you can do it the old fashioned way of doing Google ads, doing all that. Or you can go over to Mopod, and it works. And you know, for someone who's like, for my, but it does, and it's nice because entrepreneurs and things was not my full time job. And but it's a way for me to meet people like Mike. It's a way for me to inter- interact with other people who I want to hopefully work with at some point. That kind of thing. But I don't have time to do all the ads and all that and all this. So if I can go say, here's a hundred dollars, Mike. Get me a hundred, I think a hundred and seven. I don't know. The algorithm calculates it for me. You know, yep. downloads. Good. It's out of my head. Uh, sure, hundred eleven downloads. hundred eleven. Uh, but we we, exactly. we we always we always like uh. And it goes over it. too. Like, yeah, it's yeah, we, amazing. If we buy in a CPM. It's impossible for us to deliver like exactly a hundred eleven. So we always over deliver. No, you over deliver, and that's another thing. It's like whoa! I think I did a hundred 
and I got like 133 downloads, and then it's like, okay, thank you, thank you, Mike, <laughs> thank you for the bonus. I appreciate that because because it, you're not, it's not going to stop because people are going to see the ad, they're going to download it, but they might see the ad and then download it like next week or something like that, and it, or not next week, but the next day, and. It, it all works that way. So yeah, yeah. I mean, Mike, the key, the yeah. key to everything in our success with this is not just in the downloads, uh, and you know, more importantly, the IAB downloads. You know, which were actually yeah. reflected in a host. You know, a sixty-second download, unique IP address within twenty-four yeah. hours. But far more importantly, in my opinion, is just the transparency in how these campaigns are being run and the the data. Yes. So uh, you get to see everything from uh, you know, when it was delivered, how it was delivered, how many people uh, saw, you know, how many ad impressions were uh, delivered, how many mm -hmm. people clicked the play button on the actual player, how many of those plays actually resulted in an IEP download, engagement yeah. rates, which is an estimated full episode download, and we break that all down yeah. by campaign strategy. And then we show you every single audience, every device, every geo down to the city level uh, on uh, exactly where these impressions were served and what worked and what didn't work. It's incredible. It, it, and it's, for a stats geek, it's even better. Like if you like stats and knowing where things are coming from, it's like, it's a, it's it's why not use Mopod? Like why not? It's it's you know even if you do enterprise level, if you think you said five thousand dollars minimum, that's not. Well, that, that's there's not only bad. there's only. There's a, the, the, the reality, though, is there's probably, you know, three, three to 500 uh, companies in pot. There's, like, you know, there's, yeah. what, 250,000, uh, give or take, active uh, podcasts at any given time. But there's, like, realistically, with, like, yeah. marketing teams and, um, you know, real marketing budgets behind them, there's, what, the three to 500, maybe. So that's, I mean, yeah, that's really why we that. built uh, the self-serve, you know, just to address, yeah, address the rest of the market. This um, is much but, bigger, yeah. But, but, you know, the key to growth in, in general, I've said this on other interviews, but uh, it, I think the most important thing for anyone to keep in mind is when you're uh, when you have paid media for growth yeah. in anything that you're doing, uh, you should have an organic engine first, mm -hmm. like oh, figure out that organic engine first, figure out how to you know, validate that there's something worth spending money on. And mm -hmm. the great example yeah. of this is like. You know, you can let's use a newsletter as an example because it's easy and it's really uh, yeah. uh, it's yeah. easy to track everything that's happening. If you have a newsletter and organically through like your own efforts and you know with uh, you know social and with friends and family and your LinkedIn network or anyone else yeah. that, uh, anywhere else that you're pushing out for this organic engine to get people to subscribe, if you're getting you know five percent open rates with your organic audience, the yeah. people that should be opening all the time, paying mm -hmm. for media isn't going to get you higher open rates. It's not going to get you better engagements. Yeah. You need to fix what you have first. You need to mm -hmm. get to a point where you you've tested it with the group that should be opening, should be listening, should be coming back and you know leaving you reviews, etc. If you're not getting that organically, yeah. don't pay for media because it's you're just going to be paying for more people that aren't right. going to yeah. do it. Absolutely. Uh, so so here's the question for you. Here's one of the three questions I ask every single guest on the show. So blue. Blue, exactly. There you go. Favorite color is blue. There you go. Um, what is the best thing about being an entrepreneur? Because um, have, have you uh, done the corporate grind before this? Yeah, yeah, I've done it. Um, so I, I can't. I can't do that. Well, for me personally, uh, yeah. I can't work for somebody. Uh, I have too many ideas. Uh, I'm the guy, and uh, you know, God bless anyone who's ever had to work with me and the people who currently work with me. <laughs> but I'm the guy who likes metal, to yeah. come up with I, – I like to identify – uh, lots of opportunities and I'm, I'm the dot connector. Like I like to yeah. take this dot and I, Oh, I, I talked to this guy, you know, over here and I talked to this girl over here and I'm going to connect these dots and I see a huge opportunity to either make money or to, you know, build something really cool yeah. or whatever. So I like to come up with the ideas, connect the dots, prove out the idea, like actually build something mm -hmm. and then prove it out. And then I want to hand it off and I want to give it to somebody else. And that's and that doesn't really work in most corporate yeah. environments. Like in most corporate environments, like you end up with those repetitive tasks, and those things make me want to blow my head off. You know, I, I can't. Oh, I can't there that. you go. <laughs> exactly. No, no, no. In in a hypothetical. Hypo, hypothetical. Hypo, no no hari kari here. No, 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 no. Exactly. So, when what's the, what keeps you up at night? I mean, besides podcast that you know on the East Coast where it's eleven oh six a.m. and you're it's it's like midnight there. <laughs> Other than that, what keeps you up at night? Like, what's the what's the worry when you're an entrepreneur? Uh, well, I mean, 
what keeps me up at night literally is being in Japan because all my clients are in the US. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm up at midnight here for this and I have a 3 a.m. call and I have a 5 a.m. call after that. So and then, then uh, you go to bed that, because that's literally know. what keeps in a literal sense what keeps me up at night. But the thing that Love worries it. me the most about being an entrepreneur is it's it's always you don't know what what's going to happen tomorrow, right? And, yeah. and and as the entrepreneur um in contrast to being uh, an employee where I uh, you know as an employee, you do your job, you're going to get a paycheck. And mm. if you fail at your job, you lose your job and yeah. you go get another job as an entrepreneur, uh, especially one who doesn't have, you know, we're bootstrapped. We've been bootstrapped since day one. We'll never yeah. take outside money or most likely won't that, ever yeah. take outside money. <laughs> well, and like, yeah. qualify. Yeah. Yeah. You. I mean, you, you never know. You but, never know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's not something we're, we're exploring or, or well, having a real yeah. interest in. But, uh, my point being is unless you have, uh, you know, investors or something uh, along mm -hmm. those lines, if you're playing with your own money and you've uh, really, you know, put uh, pushed all of that in uh, at the end of the day, like, you know, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And yeah. that's, you, there, there's no, just, I'm going to go get another job. I mean, that's uh, it, it's no. depending on how far you've leveraged yourself. I mean, that's uh, it, it can be scary. Uh, you know, scary. I, I've, been, I've been through all sides of it. I've been, I've been through the, the early stages where mm -hmm. it was really terrifying that really keeps oh, you up at night uh where you really don't know like uh, you know, the the worst uh, the, the best worst scenario is when you have that one major client when we first started mo media our uh, within two months our my partner got morning brew uh to be our first major client they were spending Whoa. a massive amount massive amount of money with us and we're like we have this business yeah and we were rocking but we realized it was all one client yeah. and that is the worst situation to be in uh, it's great because you're making money, but at the end of the day, you, uh, find the next you need one. to diversify. Yeah. You need to. You can't have all your eggs in that one basket. Um, it's and so that... tempting to be there and just say well, we're good. You're yeah, not exactly. Good. You're not good. You're not good. You're not good. <laughs> like, come on, wake up. You know, you gotta get into the next one. The next one after that, and scale I the sucker. We, I, th right? I think we have a little over 120 clients right now, so it makes me, yeah, okay. feel you're, a lot better on that front. You're a little <laughs> diversified, which is a good thing. Exactly. <laughs> So, all right, so here, what is the most important thing to carry with you all the time besides a 21-year-old um, whiskey? Uh, most carry, like, physically or, like, emotionally both. or you mentally? Can do, you or... can do both. You can do all kinds, whatever you want to do. Well, I mean, physically, I, I always carry – I always have a necklace physically. They're, they, they don't, they're not necessarily something that is expensive or yeah. – I wear it till it breaks, and then I get another yeah. one. And usually it's – and I don't just go buy it. So, like, I have to – I have to like discover it. Like usually someone yeah. will give it to me or I'll be with someone and I'll see it while I'm with them. And it, it, it means something. This is like the most recent. And I've, I think I've been wearing it for two years now. And the one before that I wore probably 10 years. So wow. uh, ne necklace uh, for me is like the thing. Um, yeah. And ever, that, that's like a physical object. Yeah. I think I, I, emotionally or just in general, one of the things, uh, the most important thing to carry with you is just be real. Like be yeah. true to yourself, being yourself. Like uh, don't get lost in uh, trying to be the person you envy or tr yeah. don't, trying to be someone that you're not because it'll catch up to you. You're going to be miserable. Oh, yeah, you'll never be that person. You're just accept who you are, be the best version of yourself, and you know keep that in mind in everything right. that you do. You're that entrepreneur that you know you see, uh, you know. Elon Musk or Richard Branson, and you're like, I want to be like that. Or you see, you know, you're, you're a Gary V fan or something like that. And you're like, yeah. I want to be like that. Um, cool, whatever. You know, take the, take the best parts of it, and yeah. uh, you know, strive to incorporate them into uh, into your life. But you know, uh, don't abandon who you are. Exactly, that's kind of key. So, so Mike, where is your water hole online? Like, like, what? Where's your favorite spot to hang out? Online. Online is it LinkedIn? Is it God forbid Twitter? No, <laughs> is no, it Blue Sky now? So it's 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 Facebook because I have um, oh. I started the Friday Night Karaoke Facebook group. Oh yeah, we got during that. the pandemic. Yeah. yeah, so during the pandemic, uh, my my partner Joe and I uh, we started this because you know we couldn't go out. We couldn't. Mm -hmm. I love karaoke. So is he? Well, you're in uh, place and for that. we couldn't go anywhere. They just couldn't mm -hmm. go anywhere, and we we're sad. We we're like sitting at home, and we're just doing Mopod and Mo Media, and we're like we can't do anything. Mm -hmm. So we started this little Facebook group called Friday Night Karaoke, and basically it was just us posting videos, singing <laughs> karaoke songs, Love it. and then finding other people who were posting karaoke songs and featuring them. And then it Love just it. took off. Uh, we're at 14,000 members right now, or <laughs> almost 15,000. 
It's mega active. They're posting hundreds of songs every single day. It's negativity free. It's ad free. It. It's gimmick free. Oh we don't monetize it in any way, shape or form. It's just about the love of music. And then yeah. more importantly, uh, like two years ago, we launched or a year and a half ago or so, we launched the Friday Night Karaoke podcast oh, and we feature 10 of the songs that they post every single week under a theme. And uh, we put it in a podcast form. We basically drink a, a bottle of of bourbon and yeah. talk about how awesome these songs are. And again, no negativity, just all up building and for the love of music. And I'm proud to say we're the number five music pod as of today. We're the number five music podcast in the U.S. and the oh number God. five music podcast in Canada. Oh wow! And, uh, we did That's hit number wild. one, but yeah, we didn't hold it. <laughs> It's hard to hold the number one spot. It really is, you know. But so number five, it's number five, dude. Number, <laughs> yeah. number five is a good number. Five is a good number. Yeah. But again, four, you'll, you'll, you'll never hear a sing, they'll never hear a single ad. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Or crazy, one of the two. But you know, it's it's a good thing. It's a passion project. It's not a. It's, it's a, for fun. A, you have to have a side exactly. hustle that's fun that you just enjoy. Kind of you hustle with it, but it's not for business. It's just fun. It's an escape. Well, the, the other big thing with the podcast is we realized uh, you know, it would be fun to start the podcast because we wanted to go through the process. You know, we have Mopod, yeah. obviously, and we want to go through the process for, uh, f from the very beginning. Like We wanted to feel the pain of mm. what it takes to start and grow a podcast from nothing. Absolutely. Uh, oh, we didn't even use Mopod for the first long, long while. We didn't use Mopod at all. We just wanted to go through the motions of what does yeah. everyone do? Like, If I'm a podcaster, what do I do? and Love it. We, we put our best foot forward on it and uh, it worked it's it paid off absolutely uh so I thought that so the community it, made a big difference so you are so facebook's where your community is that's where we can find like awesome mopod and um in japan so i mean you're, you're between tokyo and osaka right um i'm t 40 minutes outside of tokyo 20 minutes outside yokohama, yokohama um, osaka's right, yeah. really far um, yeah, but it, you know, it, it, it's small country, but it's, it takes a while to get from point A to point B. Well, they do have the Shinkansen, which is like the bullet train. It gets you there really fast. Oh, it does. But drive, I mean, because driving is where it takes, it takes a little while. I love driving. That's when I get to, you know, I actually, you're in New York who likes driving. Wow. Yeah. You know, but well, I mean, it, it's like freeing it's and different. it's actually my, my yeah. favorite place to take a meeting. Cause I don't have to be on a freaking video zoom call. I could just actually like get actual stuff done. I love it's it. It's great. I love it. So, Mike, thank you so much for staying up late. I know you're. I know you're on Eastern time zone and the U.S. time zone, but still, it's midnight in Japan, and you know, <laughs> I'm sure the kids are sleeping, the wife's sleeping, and you're working. They're at their, They're at the in-laws. I'm freaking stoked. <laughs> I have, oh, so it's quiet. Myself. You get the whole house Not, yourself. I, and I, I have. I have meetings. You know, throughout the night, so I have to somehow make it through the night. Oh, <laughs> you, you, had, you had something to drink too. Uh oh. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm a professional. I'm, I'm good at this. You're, no, I, no, I know. But now you're going to be like, I'm, I'm sleepy now. No, no. no that, this is how you solve that. It is? It is. <laughs> so on that note, we will see everyone next time. That was a great show. If you're enjoying Entrepreneur's Enigma, please review us in the podcast directory of your choice. Every review helps other podcast listeners find our show. If you're looking for other podcasts in the marketing space, look no further than the Marketing Podcast Network at marketingpodcasts.net. I hope you have enjoyed this episode. This podcast is one of the many great shows on the MPN Marketing Podcast Network. You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Dan Farkas hosts a great podcast called The Strategic Communicator. Dan, tell us what these fine folks will hear when they listen. Jason, it's pretty simple. The Strategic Communicator podcast talks with industry leaders about emerging trends and how we can use various forms of communication to make the world a better place. Anyone listening will leave with tangible ideas you can use to help with your PR and marketing efforts. 
That's amazing. Where can people subscribe? Easy. You can go to passpr.com. You can find the show at marketingpodcast.net or just search the Strategic Communicator with Dan Farkas wherever you get your podcast. You heard him, folks. Go get it. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.